Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from yesterday, members of parliament from the PF have been stage, staging a, a silent protest. A protest we have styled as the Nixon Chilangwa sitting protest. This is the Nixon Chilangwa sitting protest. This protest was um, necessitated by the manner in which the house has been or is being handled. It's been two years uh, sitting as leader of opposition and indeed the whips. We've had a lot of pressure from the members concerning the ill treatment that they are receiving, they've been receiving from the house. We've tried in the background to engage the presiding officer. Clearly, nothing has changed. Members of parliament are responsible citizens. They are representatives of the people. That is why there are only 156 such individuals elected out of almost 20 million people. And to come to parliament to be reduced to a schoolboy because Comrade Moses Moyo feels so powerful and he thinks he can just be pointing at him and sit down, stand up, don't talk, simply unacceptable. Sitting as a member of parliament, he said, Comrade Moyo, you must be reminded. We are senior members of that parliament, have been in that parliament, and uh, we were hoping that by now you could have learned how to handle members of parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, in the last parliament, I was privileged to serve as government chief whip. What I remember, that most of you remember, is that discipline of the house was mostly channeled through the whips. Speaker Matibini will all, always call upon the whips. Whips, can we have order in the house? Speaker Matibini did not find it necessary to engage members directly. He respected the established channels of handling the house. And those channels, if you go and read in our standing orders, what the functions of the whips are, their job is to maintain discipline. And the reason why it's been like that in our Commonwealth Parliament is to ensure that members of Parliament are respected. Calling out names of members of Parliament by the presiding officer is a new practice that we are seeing only in this Parliament. It doesn't exist anywhere. It's not very long ago, I'm sure, if you refresh your memories, Speaker Matibino always said, uh, whips. Uh, maintain order. Can we ensure that we have order in the house? It's because if the presiding officers demand order and decorum in the house, it must start with the presiding officers. It was not very long ago I was having a chat with some colleagues who had gone to the Ugandan parliament. When they came back, we were having a casual chat. The people in Uganda, MPs in Uganda, who were chatting with our members of parliament that included UPND members of parliament, described our parliament as the most useless parliament. I didn't want to talk about this, but that's how we are viewed on the outside. And why did they call parliament useless? They said members of parliament have no freedom in that parliament. For those of you that um, you know, speak elementary French, like I do, parliament comes from the word parler. To speak. Members of parliament come to that house just to speak and represent the people. Like Honorable Kapianga pointed out earlier, we don't bring or advance our own views or ideas. We speak on behalf of the people that elected us. Now, can you imagine you are coming with 50, 60,000 voters behind you? And because Comrade Moses Moyo does not like your hairstyle that day. He 
doesn't want you to speak. He just says, sit down. For how long, colleagues, are we going to go on like that? Members of parliament, they've asked him. They said, you want us to go and debate? Talk about what? With all the research that we have done, it will only take one Moses Moyo or the presiding officer to interrupt at every juncture. But guess what we did? What we agreed was for us to make, present a clear case to the Zambian people. Can we allow only the UPND members of parliament to participate so that we see whether the speaker will interrupt any of them? And there it is, they played in our court. Did you watch parliament today? We had members of parliament giving foundations and backgrounds to the question, even up to three minutes, uninterrupted. Did you hear the presiding officer stopping any member to say, no, go straight to your question? And this colleagues to the case of biasness and mistreatment of PF members of parliament or opposition members of parliament. Let me just remind you, Four days ago, my dear sister and friend, Comrade Chushika Sanda, Minister of Information, um, first was given a ruling in a matter you know, that happened some time back, where it was alleged that she disrespected Madam Speaker. We remember what happened on that day. She walked across the floor and waved her hand against the presiding officer, went against uh, any form of guidance, and walked through the door. Total disregard of the household. Did you see what happens to her? She was merely reprimanded from her seat. Are we together? Four days ago, check your facts. Given Katuta faced a similar offense, today, given Katuta has been given seven days. She was called to stand behind the bar, and she's been sent away for seven days. It's the same parliament, same standing orders, and same rules, different treatment. So when the members are saying, we are being ill-treated, what happened today, thank God, in the case of Katuta, and indeed, parliamentary business throughout this morning. No one was interrupted. Kawata member of parliament stood and was giving a background, three minutes. He was just looked at and deposed poses question. That has never happened to a single member of the PF or the opposition. It's such mistreatment that the members are now saying enough is it. We warned earlier, we said, we'll start the process of exposing this parliament for what it is. We are representatives. We are not subjects of Madam Speaker. And I want to make it very clear. We are not subject of any presiding officer. Those presiding officers are mere umpires. Just to regulate debate for purposes of order. I want each one of you seated here to go back and play the clips of parliamentary business. Find out how many times presiding officers speak they speak more than members of parliament. The time allocated for this parliament is actually consumed by presiding officers. That does not happen in any parliament anywhere. I've been to Ghana. We went to Madam Speaker to Ghana. And we were watching. You would think the house has no speaker. Maybe in four hours the speaker spoke four times. Short addresses to parliament. We were in Kenya. We were in Morocco. We were in Uganda. It's only this parliament. This is a parliament for presiding officers and not for members of parliament. Countrymen and women, this is a very serious uh, indictment on our parliament and their management, the presiding officers. This parliament is a house for members of parliament. That must be made very clear. It can't be the other way around. The fact that we've been very civil and respectful should not in any way give anybody an impression that we're weak. 
because we are elected members of parliament. And that parliament has no power to expel me. No power, can you imagine? So, we've just been civil. Because they have no power to expel me. The most they can do is 30 days. Now, can you imagine if we're not civilized? We can cause chaos every day and be suspended for 30 days every other time. What does it matter? Nothing. But we decided to be respectful and offer credible checks and balances. So our silence and respect should not be taken for granted. You've all been there. Most of you have covered parliament for a very long time. Go to Standing Order 65, for instance. The rules say a member debating on the floor of the House must ensure that the information they bring on the floor of the House is both factual and verified. A presiding officer can make, change the rules any time and say a, a minister is right all the time. If the minister has spoken, that is wrong. Which, which rules? So the people that break the standing orders are presiding officers to start. Speaking as a lawyer, the moment the presiding officer does that, it means those standing orders are now at large. I can't obey them. They're not applicable. Because what, this, what the presiding officer has done uh, if they have pierced through the standing order, they don't, they don't apply anymore. So we can just apply our own arbitrary rules. And that's a difficulty. There's never been a time in this parliament when it has been so difficult to manage that parliament. But I want to tell you that I think the management of parliament is, 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 is a challenge. Every day members are being corrected every other time. When will capacity will ever be built in that parliament? Because we're being affected. I've been a member, I'm not new. I understand the rules as they stand. Out of respect, even when the house has fallen into contempt, we have kept quiet. But we can't continue. What is happening now is that the representation of our people is being affected. We have three mandates as parliament. One is to legislate laws. Two is to offer oversight, providing checks and balances, and approving the budget. Now, in the first place, when bills are presented, the order of parliament is that they refer to committees. Committees interrogate these bills and invite stakeholders, such that the report of the committee is what helps parliament to either proceed with the bill or make the necessary amendments. In some cases, bills are withdrawn for further consultation. The bill uh, Comrade Sand was referring to, the National Prosecution Authority bill, came with a negative recommendation from the committee. From practice, previously, what we saw Honorable Given Winda do is to withdraw that bill and consult further. Because the stakeholders submitting to that committee are stakeholders who are carefully selected. These are stakeholders who are likely to be affected by that particular enactment. In this particular case, for the record, the Law Association of Zambia, the uh, 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 Law Development Commission, the DPP, the Public Protector, they all opposed those amendments and many other stakeholders. The question that we had on the floor of the House is that for whose benefit then are we enacting this law? Why that is very important for you to know is that if that House is going to exist for academic purposes, then we must all be ashamed. Because then it doesn't matter what bill the executive bring, it should go through anyway. Meaning that all those processes that we've set up that could purify that could scrutinize uh, a mere academic exercise, as the presiding officer told on the fire. So this is the kind of parliament that we have. Now, this always happens when you have an executive that stretches its finger in the other organ. Last week I was telling you that when we collapse government system, parliament now is gone. It's gone. I, I, I hope you can see that. We can't even uh, enact laws properly becomes an academic exercise. Why? Because somebody is scared 
of the mighty president Akainde Ichilema Bari. He calls the tremor in everybody. Even those that should enjoy security of Kenya are so scared and terrified. They make mistakes every day. Even when we tell them, you are independent. You are an independent dam of government. They are so scared of this mighty Haka Yinde Ichilema. That's a shame. That's a shame. We can't turn ourselves into a country of cowards. I refuse to be part of a class of cowards. Yeah. He's just but a mortal human being who is just, who's also amenable before the law. He must also follow what the law provides. Why then should you send shivers in everybody? People can't preside. They want to think, what, what is he going to think? Comrade Zoetis is an accomplished lawyer, 30 years experience. He can't speak on a bill because they're dead scared that he's going to tear it apart. He's ignored. Therefore, I can't talk about anything to do with uh, finance because he's going to tear it apart. Because of one individual. Huh? You idolize one individual, turn him into a demigod that he scares everybody. That is not right. President Akainde Chilema, you should say no to that. Because God frowns upon such machinations. I want to be a president. Wala mire terela, wale mpangwa ti mo holesa. Le sakuta mikandila, mkandi. Mule batinga sana, I want to. I want to be a wala bitina. All arms of government now are so scared. I'm a judgment now, they are all... They leave much to be desired. But to the ones that are not going to be able to do it, the community also is under part of the church. But I think that the president was told Papa, I want to be able to do it. 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 Papa, I want to be able to do it. I think a lot has been said. Uh, we thought we could put a, a point across that um, our parliament is not working as it should. And uh, for us, uh, we will now not sit idle. If it means sitting uh, quiet, if it means walking out or anything, any other method or technique that is available to us, we will use it to ensure that it protects the interests of members. We have to respect our members of parliament. We demand that our members of parliament are, are, are respected and we demand a democratic uh, parliament. Uh, very quickly, I think my colleagues have spoken about um, the street vendors. Uh, there was a meeting that was called, I think there was a call extended to us by His Excellency the President over CDF. Uh, we wish to put it on record that we have declined that invitation with due respect. <coughs> uh, CDF is governed by the CDF Act. There is nothing that has changed about CDF. The only thing that has changed is the amount. The implementation and everything else, the structure, remain the same. We find that that meeting may not be necessary, neither will it be beneficial uh, you know, uh, for us. So at the same time, there are structures within parliament. We have um, a, a leader of government business who is the vice president. We have the minister of local government. So we're able to interact between the, the, the executive and, and the legislature through those channels. So if such a meeting was desired, we can have it here. Why? Because Honorable Pavium will be protected by standing orders and enjoy his immunities and privileges. Can you imagine a meeting at Munungushi and Comrade Sanga asks very difficult questions? He may ask a difficult question to His Excellency the President. The following day he will be abducted so he the president. So our MPs are insecure. They are saying we cannot have any meeting outside this parliament. Because what will follow will be a series of abductions. People accusing members of disrespecting the president or insulting the president. We, as members of the Patriotic Front, we've always respected the Republican president. Because that's an office that must be respected. When there is a wrong in that office, we point it out. But at no time have we ever disrespected that office. And yet, the overzealous officers out there they may, they may misunderstand a difficult question and uh, you know, mistake it for defamation. Mm -hmm. So we have declined that invitation, uh, but we remain uh, open to discuss uh, the CDF 
with uh, the, the structures within Parliament. Uh, we understand uh, in the functioning of CDF, and I think we have tried to advise uh, many a time, and nothing much has, uh, has come out, uh, out of that. Uh, very quickly, I think uh, our, our Minister of Mine in the Shadow Cabinet, Honorable Pavuma, uh, talked about uh, Vedanta. Uh, we all know the story of Vedanta. I think before we went to elections, there was a report that they had bought vehicles for the UPND, Mahindras, and Toyota Hiluxes, and also released some money. At some point, they had released $100,000. There was an appeal uh, by the president of the party then to say, why don't you increase it to 300000 because when I get into power, I'll give you back the mind. I'm sure you all remember that story. That story was uh, was, was given to us by His Excellency the President then, President Dick Chagolo, who was in office, says, I have this information, that these people have received money, they're asking for more money, and they've promised that they'll give back the debt. Okay? There was a meeting in Cape Town, I want, we all must remember this, thing, where, you know, the, this Vedata met with our President. We asked on the floor of the House, can you give us the details of your meeting? We were never told. In the background, the Minister of Mines kept on saying, Vedata will never come back. They are gone. So the question is, what has changed? What has changed? Have you been told what has changed? So, remember that we told you, corruption is not the mayor giving or receiving of bribes. It will come by way of policy, administration, and legislation. So whatever policy they have on, uh, on, on, on KCF, let's wait. Let's wait it against what we know about the relationship that uh, uh, UPND has with Vendata. So is it payback time? Is the deal between government and Vendata in the best interest of the private citizens or indeed the public? Your guess is as good as mine. This will benefit the UPN. It doesn't matter what it will happen to the people in the Copper Belt. And this is the perfect definition of corruption. So if anybody wanted to know uh, what corruption is, the deal of giving back the data is corruption. Don't call it by any other name. That is pure corruption. Why? Because our friends in the UPN received money and vehicles from the data before. So with all the problems that they left on the Copper Belt, the Minister of Mines, Honorable Pavima, said they were chased by the people, government simply implemented. So the offenses and the atrocities they caused against our people were never addressed, but they've given them back the mind. Why? It's payback time. And somebody must tomorrow call somebody else corrupt, are you sure? With this data deal on which everybody can see is less with corruption. So, uh, colleagues, I think that uh, we all have to open our eyes. Don't leave any details behind. Everything is connected. 2021, money was received, vehicles were received. Late 2021, 2022, a meeting happened in Cape Town. Today, the data has been given back the money. And you want to say, you're looking for corruption elsewhere. Why, why are you looking for corruption elsewhere? You can't get it in this one. So I think we, we, it's been a long day. Uh, uh, Gordon Mwila, Honorable Member from Korea, talked about the three million tons. Comrade, I'm worried too. We are almost we are going to the third year. We gave out three billion kwacha per year, okay, to these mining houses. I don't want you to forget that. We made mineral oil tax deductible and we are losing three billion kwacha per year in exchange for a, a ramp in production to three million tons. Now, the production is going down. Have they been cheated? Those mining houses, now they're supposed to be recording an increase in the output in the mining sector because we acted to our detriment by giving them those concessions. But now we are being told the production is going down. And they are still looking out for who's corrupt. Colleagues, they are still looking out for who's corrupt. If these details that we're able to bring out off the cuff, if we're given time, it's a catalog. Yeah, so I think I'll end here because I sometimes get affected in such high levels of corruption. So, colleagues, thank you very much for your attention.